Welcome to the chapter on RTOS timers and periodic events. Uh, Eric, in the last chapter, we actually used a TI uh, timer driver, didn't we? We did. So that was one way we can do That was the timing time mechanism events. for the blinking in the LED. So, so what are the new things we're looking at in this chapter? Well, first of all, we're going to step back a little bit and look at all the different timing mechanisms within the architecture as well as the RTOS. Lots of different clocks running around and timing events. So as we look at all the different ways, let me count the ways that we can time things within the system, we're really going to focus on the heartbeat of the RTOS, which is called a system tick. So the RTOS itself uses a timer to give a heartbeat to the system and actually generate what we call periodic functions. A lot of times in a system you may want to trigger a function to run every millisecond or every 100 microseconds or something. This is the tool or the service that's used within the RTOS to accomplish that. So we can create a lot of different events with just a single timer using this solution. Sure. And, and we've worked out when we've done, uh, for example, tasks and things of that sort before, uh, we, we've actually seen something called a timeout value. In so some of those so when we calls. covered semaphores, there was a semaphore post and then there was a semaphore pend, and there are other blocking calls within the RTOS similar to semaphore pend. It was what semaphore are you pending on, and then the second argument was the timeout value. Yeah. That actually uses how many system ticks so uh, the, become the timeout value. So the tick that we just talked about is what gets used by that. Sure. Okay. So. Then what are we going to do in the lab in this, this chapter? So this lab is similar to the previous lab. In the previous lab, we actually set up an architecture timer. In this lab, we're going to use the BIOS clock module to set up the tick rate. And then we're going to create a clock function that posts the semaphore, that unblocks the task, that blinks the LED. So before I get ticked off, we better get started with this chapter. <laughs> yeah. All right, welcome to Chapter 10, TIRTOS Timers and Periodic Events. So throughout the workshop, we've been talking a lot about the system tick, and we've also alluded to clock functions. So two goals of this chapter are really how do you configure the system tick? How do you use that system tick to trigger clock functions? And then BIOS uses timers to do a lot of these activities. So based upon your architecture, what timers are being used by default? Can you switch timers? Can you combine timers? We're really trying to answer those different questions for all the different targets. So the objectives are really to find the system tick? What is a clock function? How do you create a clock function? What are clock functions used for? If you've got a low power device, you've probably heard a expression called tick suppression. And so we need to define what that is and how to configure that. And then Scott and I put together a table of timers and architectures to talk about which ones are used by default, for which services within BIOS, and can you combine, and if there's any sort of exceptions to those things. So a lot of great information in one spot. I've had tick suppression for a long time. I think deep Woods Off does a really good job, so when you're out hiking, but doing tick suppression. Good for you. What's the lab goal? Well, remember in lab nine, we used an actual hardware timer from a previous lab. We set it up for to go off every 500 milliseconds and then run that ISR, the callback function of the driver. We posted a semaphore to unblock the task. We are going to replace the my timers function and driver with a clock function. So in main, now we're going to create a clock function and we're going to configure the tick to go off at a certain rate. And then we're going to create the clock function to trigger at X number of clock ticks. Basically what's gonna end up happening is a combination of those two. The clock function is going to be triggered every 500 milliseconds. Sounds same familiar, as same as before. And that clock function will simply post a semaphore to unblock the task that toggles the LED. So we're really replacing the front end timer business. We're leaving the back end task exactly the same as before. So as far as the outline goes for this chapter, first of all, we're gonna talk about, there's lots of different timers on all these different architectures. And so that brings up lots of questions that we're then going to answer in the next two to three sections. The next section is, what is a system tick? How do you configure the system tick? And what are the parameters for that system tick? And then how do you use that to trigger clock functions? And then when you wanna create clock functions, what are the parameters? How do you do that? We've done that before in terms of creating RTOS objects. Now it's gonna be creating a clock 
clock function. And then a summary, we'll end with a summary of the timer usage for all architectures and all bioservices, what timers are used and what options do you have. And then thankfully then at the end of this chapter, we're gonna do a lab where you actually get to play around with, create a clock function, configure the system tick, and then go look at things in ROB and the RTOS analyzer during debug. Thank <laughs> you.